it's Game Dev Micah from Aggressive Performance and also Aggressive Mastery. The video games are on a little bit of a, a pause as I'm looking to see if anyone wants to help me make them. Look for funding, stuff like that. Also, maybe just looking to help somebody else make their games. And I've been helping a lot of Fortnite and uh, UE5 creators optimize their games. So if you need any optimization stuff, turns out I know a lot about it. Here's an example. We got 60 draw calls for 300,000 meshes right here. They're all part of a single ISM. We take per instance custom that, uh, value and drive for our material colors. So we get RGB, the three colors. We blend that by tilting it like, it, like old DLP kind of cheats on doing that, or pixels kind of cheat doing that on intensity, to literally create a display rendered in Unreal Engine on a 40, 60, eight gig in 4K at almost six, at 50 frames per second right now and 60 draw calls. This video is in here just to give us something to render on the display. It's actually a camera that's up here looking at the video. So if we wanted to put anything in the world, like players or just our entire footage running around the world, could be sent to the TV here rather cheaply and rendered with all these individual pixels if we wanted to do something weird like this. Uh, the ground is just a mirror to reflect the light. And that gives me kind of that DLP feel where the old chip would reflect light. So there's no, nothing. all that's going on down here on the ground is li literally reflections from Unreal Engine of the, uh, the actual phys physical pixel changes up here on the screen. Mind, like wild amounts of data and great performance on a 4060. Hey. Ah, it's still 50 frames per second. All right, let's go look at the project. Boo! Here we are in the project. This white plane back here is the, is the back plane. And I've deleted the screen so I can show you how to generate a new one. So I made a screen generator to do that. So go into content, switchboard, or content, game dev samples, switchboard, blueprints, and you'll see this PP screen generator. Bring that in here and I believe reset to zero. Yep, yep. You'll see it has a start and an end point. The end point will be in the middle of the screen. If you want to make it the full size of the screen, 20,000 or 40,000 by 20,000 be the full screen size. And then on this, if you hit generate screen from the, the center of the blueprint, that will go ahead and generate out our, our instant static mesh at the size between those endpoints at the scaling we've set, which is one. We have a custom mesh, which is a little flipper I'll show you uh, in the meshes. We have one custom mesh. It's just about a normal square, only much thinner, and uh, also uh, a third of the width. So about 26 units wide by 100 tall, and that's what our flipper is. Do three of those to make about 100 to make a cell. That gives us our an array, or our, our first pixel of the array. We have about 300,000, so that would be about 100,000 pixels or, uh, with three flippers each. Generated. You can then go ahead and delete the screen generator. Save everything, hit play, and we'll see that the material is updating from the render uh, texture that we're generating here. We're also unlit, so what you see is really where the full bright from the white behind the screen is shining through because of the tilt and no shadowing and full lit versus the black or gray at the backside of the uh, pixels. If we turn on lit, See, we get a whole bunch of light blending of the different colors and it starts to really give us that full gambit there. Which I pause this real quick and full screen it. Actually, it's gonna look really weird. Uh, full screen with the widget reflector. I'm on a 4K display. I have the widget reflector on for filming so you can see stuff. Then when you full screen like that, it tries a full screen in 4K. So. so we, we saw the video earlier, we'll wander around some more. So how we drive that, we have this camera actor here. Camera actor. Oh, but it's just looking at, not being rendered. Fine. Camera actor. Somewhere. We're playing. That's all right, there's the camera. That's looking at the, uh, the display down there. That then goes to a render texture that all those 
that's feeding a material that all the digital pixels are driven by. That's in the materials, one flip remain material. There's an instance of it so that you can modify it at runtime to adjust a couple values for intensity and color and so on to adjust the, uh, how the TV looks off of your view. You can do some adjustments when you open the material here. Brightness, color, intensity, and then rotator ratio. Play around with those. Um, play around with them. But what that's an instance of, here, and here's the meat and potatoes. Not that big. Start over here with our world position. Well, not that big. Um, talk about. Part on the top here is our albedo generation color. This, we, I sliced up the uh, box just so we can see. I took the normal and I just get this into one material, took the normal and found out the position that was facing where I uh, just ended up starting making the level and made that position or that normal direction my color for the box and then did the rest of it black or the inverse of that. Look through this and find out, but that's what I did. I used this one texture to color the whole box, change the color of the sides as needed and also um, pull out and negative and subtract and so on. So I try to outline that here. I am putting this whole thing up so you can dig through it. I got it. And so um, that's just setting the colors. And what that's gonna do on this box here, doing. Because I'm driving it from data. So here's why I'm not driving it from data. So that's what you see these colors here. I'm driving it per instant custom data off of the individual ISM instance so that I can do this all in one draw call versus having multiple instances. So this right here is driven from the ISM. If we just shove blue in there to see what's going on, I do blue on the bottom and back and the top. Sides are black. And then the part that faces the player at the beginning is black, the default state. Then this whole thing rotates, you're bringing on more blue, bringing on more blue, bringing on more blue, until it covers that whole area. Or whatever color this pixel is. Back in here. And it will look like this in the editor because we're driving it from data that we don't have access to yet. So it's I want to grab the blue. Same thing down here on the rotation. So the world position offset rotation, that's going to be done with a rotate about axis. I went ahead and I'm driving the axis through custom data. Or here you're see I could drive it, say it's the Y. So comparison. But driving it for the custom data means that if you wanted to modify it, for instance, good and how it rotates so you can go around buildings and stuff set up for it. Uh, absolute world position for the position of our pixel and then the pivot of the object. So static mesh itself, we're grabbing the pixel, the pivot of it to pivot the uh, out. Then over here, we're going to go about modifying the intensity of how much we pivot. So initially, we're purely black. As we bring on that color of light, we're doing that based on the color we are. So I grab the, the, uh, the detail from the per instance data to find out what color we are. Then we multiply all the colors by the color we are to only get that color that we are's intensity out. And then you have some values to multiply if you want to bring in the overall color intensity in and how much that you do, which would be like a general brightness. It pulls down the color, but brings up the brightness. Play around with tuning your color and how it's driven by per instance data. Uh, and then you come over here and this is uh, absolute world position is how we're gonna have a world tileable uh, texture that goes across the entire screen. And then we uh, tune it as we need to for uh, doing the range. However, we do have a scale put that I fed in here. Seven, that's the scaling, the two inputs from the for instance custom data when you build the array is gonna tell this material how big the array is and how much to scale the U. That's done right here per, per instance custom data on each ISM. Scale the individual material as well and get under one ISM or one draw. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I inverted the, the material so that it would match the camera to where the player is. That's why that's there. Otherwise, 
by accident. That's that's it. So we're taking our our mesh, we're rotating it one direction on the axis that we get off the ISM in that when we built the uh, the screen. Rotate on that. We rotate the intensity of that based on the color that we have been assigned by the IS, ISM in and the amount of that color that's in this part of the UV that we are looking at, our pixel. And that gets scaled out, so it always matches. Yep, that's that. That's that's it. It all runs on the GPU as a shader. It's not even in Niagara, no system. So that's why we can just get such great performance on it. Um, let's look at the uh, generator tool. Look at the generator tool real quick. The render target, we'll look at that whole setup on the render target as well. So the camera here. It's gonna come down here and have a texture target. That's gonna be right here. This is the camera's gonna be sending vision to. Out here, click on that. Then that render target here, the smaller you can make this texture. So I only have it at 512 by 256. The less data it takes up, the quicker it updates. Um, so, you know, we're making pixels out of it. I mean, I'm, I, this actually helps the pixels act more like uh, individual tiles rather than distorting a little bit and, and angling is by having a, a cheaper texture to drive them. That's all this is. That goes into the texture. Right here is a texture sample to the uh, render target. Instance, this lets you help you tune that a little bit. General mats, uh, the backlight mat is here. It's just a simple emissive backlight at half grayness. And uh, cheap mat and the cheap mat instance for the, just the two start in for the, uh, the green builder. And then my cheap mover, I was actually going to show you. Where I'll put in here a key. We're on there. Uh, that is. Nope, that's cheap. And it's just bouncing off of a update in the material as well. And I'm going to put this right over here in front of the screen so that when we up play, hit play now, you can see on the screen, there's the blue cube. And so that's just to show you it's a real time uh, update and it's just rendering whatever you want it to render there. Make it movable, like bigger, what have you. You know, so it's it's alive. There's that. Oh yes, briefly go over the <clears throat> screen generator blueprint. So it has some notes in it. It's not that huge. Uh, we just spawn an actor. Actor is a pre-made actor I did that just has an ISM in it. Port screen actor. That has some settings in it to make it cheaper, and so I don't have to assign those. So we spawn an actor <clears throat> with an I, and we add with the to grab the ISM out of it. We get our scale, our flipper scale, which is set off of uh, it, it's 1.0 right now. But if you wanted to scale the flipper to make it different, like make it smaller or larger pixels, you could do it here. Then we take our start and end point, get the distance between them for both a, hard, uh, a height and length, how much we're going to have to loop. Come on over here and we start a loop. Uh, go into the second part of the loop to fill up a column. Go ahead and select a different color. And we do we alternate that. So every column, as we go across filling out the array, we change color. That way we just get one of the colors across the whole array. Um, we add instances. You could do this more efficiently, but we're just, I mean, this is a little editor one time thing. You could do it more efficiently by doing a batch add. Uh, but I mean, we have to do these set custom values over here anyway. So we add an instance, we come over here, grab that I instance ID that we just added, and we're going to go ahead and set eight custom values. These custom values, the top is the color, so RGB, 
Pass them right in here as, as individual values. Next one is the directionality, how we do that axle rotation, how we pass them in. Uh, these custom data index, indexes are per instance. When you look at the ISM and look at the custom data, you're gonna see a huge array that are not ordered like you would think they would because they go ahead and offset it for you, okay? So when we put this in here, we're just gonna put this in here as if it, there was only one instance in the array ever, and they're gonna offset it for you when they look it up, they being epic. So just put them in here like this, and then when you have 300,000 of them, they each get eight uh, pieces of custom data put into that 900,000 array or whatever of uh, custom data. We'll have to deal with it. So we send directionality and color in, and then down here, we're sending the scale adjustment to the material as well. So this would be how big of an array we end up, or screen we ended up making. The values for both, we scale both as well, and that way we can hide too. There it is. Um, so this is building the screen. A little bit of detail up here. Sorry, there's not more notes and details in this. I've really tried to clean it up, but every time I clean it up, oh, I'll just make a screen generator. This took all day. I love doing this stuff. I just can't. Um, so yeah, hook, check it out. Me up with any questions. Here with the video not playing, that cube is still animating, so we're still catching it. Kind of fun. Cool. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you soon. Oh, I'll be at Unreal, Unreal Fest Seattle at the end of the month. If you're there, uh, I got a card. <laughs> is making it. There's a yep, you're not gonna focus on that, but I got a card. Stuff on it. Love to give you one. Ciao. Yeah.